Hello, I just got a hold of the new Rexine V1 Max, the ultimate top of the line dash cam. As far as I know, it's 260 bucks and I got it installed. It took me about an hour and a half, mainly because I was removing my old dash cam and scraping up some of the stuff off the window and wiring it to the back here. So I have it all wired up. It's running at the moment on the left side. You can see here's the optional GPS plugin. Uh, the last two Rexing cameras I have have come with it, but I've never plugged anything in. I think that's some optional thing that most people don't need. This version has a built-in GPS inside it, and so you also don't need that. Uh, right above here is the cable for the rear camera. And on the other side, here is the, let's see if we can clear this up here. Here's the slot for the memory card. Here's the power cord. And that's about it on the side. Now there's a huge problem, design flaw here in my opinion. The power cord blocks the memory card slot. And so you have to unplug it every time you want to put things in and out. And additionally, the memory card is very hard to get in there. You need like a tool or something, like keep some kind of tool in your car, screwdriver, whatever. I tried with my nails, I wasn't able to do it. It's very hard to get it to click. Additionally, the spring on this thing is insane. If As you're struggling to get this thing in here, the and your finger slips off of it, it launches all the way across the car to the ground and... It was nighttime. I'm struggling to find the card, but the last two times I tried to put the card in there, the the incredible catapult force of the memory card sends it flying. So one trick I like to use to get the memory card in is carry along your little uh, memory card and larger adapter thing, and then if you just take the plastic edge and push on the memory card, that's how you can get it to lock into place. And uh, so here again, here's the side of where the memory card comes out and everything's all nice until you try to shove it in there and it's just super pain to try to, your nail doesn't quite get it to lock. See, it just pops right up here. There, I actually got it that time, but um, just using that trick, it's very helpful to just carry this thing along with you and then use it to if your fingernail can't quite reach or you can't get it to lock i've been using that trick on all three of the dash cans so on the front of the front of the device here you can see the controls it's very similar to their last 200 dollar version here the um as you can see the 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 recording controls are a bit obnoxious it's red here red here red here and at nighttime, I find that pretty annoying. You can see the rear camera is up at the top and the main camera is here. You have the OK button and this has this new feature. If there's some kind of emergency, you hit the OK button once or twice like this. And it's making an emergency video and it's locking the file. So. That's pretty cool if there's some kind of emergency, but as you're navigating the menu, you hit this thing all the time by mistake. And as you can see, you hit it by mistake and then you're sitting here waiting for this dumb video to finish creating before you can even use the menu system again. So there's also some just general menu conf confusion as you're navigating the menus here where you keep wanting to press this power button record button by mistake when they want you to hit the OK button. But at the same time, when you hit the OK button several times in this menu, it tries to make an emergency vi video. So I'm hoping maybe they can somehow patch that problem up or you're just stuck with it for life. So scrolling through the menu here, uh, I wouldn't say their menus are very intuitive UX design wise. You use these two buttons left and right to go through the menus and then you want to push this as your final mouse click button, but instead it's the okay button. 
so we have video encode mode, we have resolution, loop recording. Um, they let you only make three minute videos max. I'd prefer like five, but that's all they give you. Record type, I'm not sure what that is. Flip, you can flip the camera upside down. I'm not sure why you would do that. Yeah, I just can't even imagine why you'd want to do that. And then mirror, you can flip the the videos left or right. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that either, but that option is there. Distortion correction, that's something new that I haven't seen before. I'm not sure what it does, but I have it on. The manual is a 17 page manual and uh, it, it's pretty descriptive, but it doesn't answer everything. So some of these features I'm just gonna have to learn later what it is. You have anti-flicker mode. I, I gotta assume it's flickering some strangely and then that corrects it, but I haven't seen that problem. You can turn that mic on and off. You can, I'm not sure what OSD is either. And parking monitor. So this thing will actually monitor your car while you're away if you have the direct wire kit. And the problem my experience was with the previous model. So let me show you the previous model that I had here. Here is the Rexine $170 version. It's like the V1 LG. And I hooked this thing up directly, hardwired it, and it just drained my whole battery. In, in their description, they say that it won't do that, but that's what it did for my car. So I had to take the hard wire off. But parking monitor, supposedly, We'll have it watch your car while you're gone and you set the sensitivity and it will trigger and record things if someone hits your car or, you know, does something that sets the, the thing off here. So they ha hide additional settings with this button right here. And so you can do things like screensaver. See, it, it, the menu is just such a pain in the ass here, the menu systems. Sensitivity of the device for if it's bumped or something, volume on or off, uh, key tone for pushing buttons. They have this boot sound, this annoying, annoying as can be sound song thing that plays when it starts up. So you immediately have to turn that off. You can set the time. The time was just automatically set for me, probably because of the GPS, time zone, daylight savings on and off, and speed units, kilometers, etc. Time formats for what you want the time to be displayed as. GPS info, this one's kind of interesting. It basically shows where you are here. And uh, let's see here. I wanna give my position away so I move the camera away. Um, let's see here. So, scrolling down here, language. Uh, format the card and this thing has a very nice message that says when the card is in or out the other ones didn't seem to do that They just didn't, wouldn't record and wouldn't say anything. This one tells you that your card is missing and You can revert all your settings default settings Wi-Fi mode This is a, a feature of of this $260 version and their $200 version, which I didn't have you can go to the app store and get a Rexing app and access the stuff via the app. And I've seen that on some of the cheaper $100 cameras and stuff. And so if you don't want to drag your memory card out, especially when it launches across your car and difficult to put in, you have to take the power cord and stuff off. It's much better to say, use the app and uh, you can access videos on your phone. And it's, I can't really, f I'm using my phone to record, so I, I can't exactly record my phone as I am <laughs> recording with my phone. So anyway, use this app and you can access the videos directly and delete them. The The only problem I noticed with that is the, the emergency videos you can't seem to delete off of there. And I think I had to take it back to my my computer to delete that off. And uh, you can't update the firmware. What you do is take the thing off and drag it into your computer and download a bin file and swap it around. And there's there's an updating process. And I've never done that with the previous cameras, but I'm hoping like they can improve the menu system. Maybe there's some kind of patch updates that improve things. 
So anyway, I, I really want to compare this to the $170 version because this thing that got on Amazon deal of the day for even only 130 or so. And, you know, honestly, I think this one is actually much better, except for the video quality. The video quality is really good. And this is actually my one before that. This one was actually really good for a lot of years as well. So I've got three of these and I put the best in my car. The next one best I we put in our second car. And then my, my kid, I'm going to give him like the crappiest one, which he's perfectly happy with to have like the oldest dash cam because he doesn't really care about dash cams. So anyway, when you compare this to the 170, this one has the, the 170 version just has a lot better screen size. You can see things a lot better. And then if you... Look at the devices sideways. This thing is just so fat, 170 bucks, and it's just really fat to the point where I can't fit it behind the mirror like I did with my, this, the 170 LG, LG I fit behind the mirror and then just would move the mirror when I wanted to see the screen. But this thing is so fat, I just have to, you can see my, it, it kind of, I had to put it below the mirror and it kind of sucks up my field of view. So maybe I might not put that there long term. And so if you want this stuff, want to take this thing off here. Just got a 3M holder and you just sort of pull it sideways and they actually give you two of these so you can ha say put the other one in another car and just drag this camera between it. So here's what the camera looks like. Uh, the the other one I have has this dial that lets you move the camera around, while the more expensive one here just makes you manually grab with your fingers and put it around to the proper spot. And so once you get it in there, you would once you get it in there, it's kind of difficult to do this with holding a camera here, but you would just take your fingers and try not to touch the lens and uh, position the camera so that it's got the best field as compared to this other one where you can use the side thing to, to do that as well. So um, I, I'd like to first, I'd like to show you the old rear camera and this is actually way better than this, the new one that I got. So you can, so what I would do is put this in the rear of the car. I'll show you in a second. And you can tilt this thing and it's very nice. While here is the new camera and this thing's kind of junky, I think. It's a lot smaller, but you can't really tilt it as well. And so you can almost see here that when I take videos, the camera's pointed like straight down and I haven't quite figured out how to tilt it up a bit further so it's not just pointed directly at the, the rear deck. So here's a close-up of the rear camera again and the thing tilts tilts up here but you know that's not the direction that you'd want to tilt the camera it's just going to aim down into your cabin so I'm not sure exactly what is going on with the design of this thing. So I put some Velcro in there as temporary to work on getting the camera in the exact spot. But if you tilt it all the way to the top, you can sort of see here, it just aims down to where this is most of your video. Like what, what you're seeing on the screen is like how my videos are turning out where you want the camera to be show something like this, but instead the camera is showing like this much of the screen. So. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do to fix that. I thought about taking this and reversing it and flipping it upside down so where like something like this or something. I mean, I don't know exactly. They included some screws too, which I'm very confused why they include screws. I'm guessing maybe they want you to like somehow tilt this up and screw it into your headliner and I'd rather not making screw holes into my headliner because you know you're gonna have your car for 
an amount of time and you don't want to just install one stupid thing in it and then screw up your headliner over an install. So I'm not quite sure what to do to get this thing going. So I'm not at all happy with the design of the rear camera. I'd love to swap it out with the older version. The quality of the videos though is very good, especially in the night vision. It's doing whatever, 1080p for the rear camera and 4K for the front. And and the, the, the video is very good. It's just aiming the stupid thing. So another thing I thought about is just try to add some sort of crap above here that I can sort of latch on to that tilt the camera better. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Add a bunch of foam or something or stickers or something just to tilt the camera down a bit more so that's going to be aimed right. So that's like some work and I don't know why they would possibly make you go to that trouble just to aim your camera. So I, I definitely say the rear camera is pretty poor in design on this dash cam versus their earlier $170 model. And so that's that's a real major complaint of mine that the that that here you have the $170 rear camera and it, it actually looks way cooler and uh it can tilt it all, a whole lot better than the the new camera. I mean this new one feels like it's one of those $10 uh you can go on Amazon and see these $10 rear backup camera things. I mean, I don't know if this is some kind of test version of the rear camera or if this is the one I'm stuck with or what, because I got this thing as one of the first few people that get, that got the camera. And uh, there was only one other video on this thing that I even saw on YouTube for, for uh, the camera description. And... So, I mean, I personally, I would stick with this, the 170 older version because it's so much cheaper. And you, if you can find on sale like 130, I mean, that's quite a bit of savings compared to this $260 version of the camera. So you, you might ask like, what is the, why would you ever want this 260 version of the camera? And the reason is, is because uh, the, the video quality is 4K and it's just so much more amazing than this, than the LG, the, the V1 LG. Uh, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put some sample videos at the end, but you can just tell that like everything is so much more clear, sort of like this. This camera I'm using to record record it, but and then additionally the night vision is just really good. I mean, I'm watching the videos for the night vision and they look better than what I was seeing with my real eyes. So it's almost like you can see better with the camera in the night vision in the videos review than you could have seen yourself just watching out your window. So I would say that's the major reason why you might want to switch to this just for the overall quality of videos. And then when you think about a dash cam, you know, the ultimate goal with a dash cam is to have just really good video of your driving and, and very good rear video of your driving. And so that's, this thing achieves that, but it comes at the cost of 260 bucks. And, you know, that's just kind of an outrageous price for, a dash cam in my opinion i mean i don't know but I, I i would stick more closer to the 150 dollar range and i keep having to bring my camera down because of all the walkers that keep going by here they're just like endless stream of people walking that i don't want them in my video so anyway this this camera is the one i started off with like maybe three four years ago and it's got the controls are very similar it's come like quite a long way as you can see how bulky this one is compared to this one but at the same time they seem just get, getting fatter and fatter for the camera size and it's like it's just I, i'm not sure why that they have to be so fat it probably has to do with just like you're trying to get a 4k video or, i mean i don't know but i'm not liking just the general trend of these cameras that they're just getting fatter and fatter to the point where they're just some giant brick on your windshield and so uh for the rear cameras you can see 
for the controls i wired them up through the headliner you just you know they give you a tool to pull it up and you tuck them in there you take off the a pillar and run it down to the bottom i have the here's the cigarette connection for this thing and the previous version had this giant red button that flashed that was super annoying and sometimes you would press it by mistake and so it's it's actually an upgrade i think where this one doesn't have any controls on it whatsoever and it's just uh you know you just put it in and it's going to be on and you don't have to worry about oh this dumb red button i mean because seriously like my whole life is is the red button on and did i hit it by mistake with this uh previous camera so there are some i mean there 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 are a list of pros with this additionally this thing can uh, put your speed and the GPS location over your videos and but like the con of that is I cannot figure out how to turn it off and get that off of my videos so when I go share them I don't want people to see I was speeding or I don't want people to see where I was driving and so I have to go into Adobe Premiere and and motion blur that out of my videos so that people don't see where doesn't reveal that information that I don't want to share with people. So that's that's kind of like a plus and a con. I'm hoping if I can find the right option in the menus and, or uh, do a firmware update, perhaps they can fix that problem for me. So uh, I have this whole written up review on this additionally, and I'll probably I'll, I'll post in the information below so it's more clear, clear to read the pros and cons of it. But um, I just wanted to put this video out here because uh, because I seem to be one of the first people to get this thing. Plus, it's two hundred sixty bucks, so you know people might be scared to even put that much money into a dash cam. You know. <laughs> So uh, check out the description below and um, please uh, subscribe if you find this video enjoyable.